Good morning and thank you for joining the VMware Cloud Developer webcast. Please welcome to the stage VMware CEO Paul Maritz. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you all here today, both those of you who are out on the web and those of you who are here in person with us, uh, to what I hope will be actually an interesting and fun uh, session today. What you're going to see today represents uh, some of the best work of several generation of uh, developers. There's some of them, uh, like myself, who are on the verge of genuinely qualifying as grandfathers uh, to the next generation of programmers and the generation after that. And uh, it really represents some really great work uh, that has uh, taken place. I've spent, uh, as I said, the last 30 years in this industry uh, working in one way or the other with platforms. I was there at Intel in the early 1980s when uh, the x86 platform was really born. I was at uh, Microsoft in the 80s and 90s uh, when the Windows platform really got, uh, took off. I remember the first conference in 1993 where we introduced the Win32 uh, programming interfaces to the world. Uh, today we're at another kind of juncture in the industry. And uh, there are two interesting uh, forces that I think are working to provide the background to what we're talking about today. One is, is the emergence of new programming frameworks. Uh, it's kind of interesting to see in the industry that whereas six, seven, eight years ago it looked like the world had kind of stabilized and crystallized around EJB on the one hand and .NET on the other. And right when we thought that things had uh, stopped changing forever, there was an explosion uh, of creativity that was primarily bottoms-up, developer-led, uh, as developers gave birth to the new generation of open and open source programming frameworks, uh, Spring, Ruby on Rails, uh, now Node, etc. And it really represented developers finding their own way to address the challenges of complexity and scale and uh, doing things in their own terms in uh, ways that made sense to themselves. You see that continuing with the emergence of the new NoSQL uh, programming uh, models uh, and solutions in that space. So tremendous ferment and energy uh, that has been bottoms up, developer led, primarily taking place in the open and open source uh, arena. The other big change obviously is the emergence of large scale clouds as a new engine for computing, a, a new force for uh, providing scale and new deployment options. Now, the question about the cloud is, is are these new clouds that are emerging going to become the ultimate California motels or not <laughs> uh, that you can check into but never check out of? Are we in fact going back to the mainframe era uh, of the 60s and 70s where you had uh, uh, essentially proprietary architectures that developers had to choose from. If the modern clouds in terms of power and scale are becoming the new hardware, what, will, what layer, what cloaking layer will play the role that Linux did uh, for hardware architectures in the 80s and 90s? What will give developers a way of writing rich applications uh, but having cloud portability? Uh, we believe that that problem needs to get solved and it needs to get solved in an open and preferably open source manner. In other words, a genuinely open direction that uh, can complement uh, the work that has been done by developers, led by developers around these new programming fr frameworks and new programming techniques. And uh, what you'll hear about today is our contribution to bring those two things together uh, and trying to do it in a way that is complementary to what developers have done over the last several years in the open and open source based world. And uh, with that I'd like to welcome uh, Rod Johnson. Rod, as you know, is the intellectual father uh, of the Spring Programming Framework, a longtime contributor in the open and open source world. Rod. Thank you, Paul. I think Paul's point about the generations of technologists here is very interesting. 
and also technologists who have come from different places. So for example, if you look at the software that we're launching today and um, hope that you will become involved with, the key contributors to that have come from a lot of different spaces. So for example, uh, Mark Lukowski was you know, one of the leading forces at Microsoft behind the Windows NT um, operating system. Derek um, Collison was a key architect in the leading enterprise messaging um, product. So my background, on the other hand, is more on developer frameworks and productivity. My background was as the founder um, of the Spring framework. And really, Spring was one of the first of the frameworks that, as Paul said, really simplified developer experience. Before Spring, Java was excessively complex. People had a lot of trouble building, as it was called then, J2EE applications. They were overly complex. They were overly slow. Frankly, you looked at the business requirements and you looked at the thousands of lines of code. And, well, I and other people said, hey, this does not compute. Something went wrong here. So I did something about that. And the Rails community did something about that for their language ecosystem. And the Django community and various other communities really radically improved the developer experience. So they attacked the complexity that existed in the developer space and they made a profound difference. In every case, they did that through open source. So this really made the world a better place. When I think about my own experience and background and how we did that with Spring, one thing that we did is we did it in open source and our community were a very important part of this journey. Another thing that we did was we adopted some core values early on and we stuck with them. Some of the core values around Spring were portability, productivity and simplicity. The goal of everything was to make your application simpler and therefore make you as a Spring developer more productive than if you were not using Spring. So if you were using Spring, you were thinking less about nasty, complex APIs. You were actually thinking more about your business logic. The first of those key values, however, was always really important to us, and that was portability. The goal was that if you authored an application with Spring, we were going to do our level best to ensure that wherever you wanted to run that application, whether it was WebSphere, WebLogic, Tomcat, Jetty, um, JBoss, or even outside an application server, Spring was going to help you do that. It turns out that although our platform is a sort of a story at VMware is bigger than Spring, bigger than Java, and will evolve to embrace other language and framework communities, these values have a lot to offer as we move forward. Overall, in computing, the trend is toward simplicity. If you look at the drivers for toward cloud computing, a lot of people talk about cost reduction, etc. To me, the most interesting driver is business agility. You want to have developers who are the people who implement business logic able to implement that business logic without being unduly distracted by complex APIs. And when they've done that, you want them to be able to go push that business logic out into production without excessive complexity. So if you look at how this trend towards simplicity is playing out, there's been massive progress in the last five to 10 years. If you look at, for example, the experience of being a Spring and Java developer today versus, say, being an EJB developer in 2003, I mean, it's, it literally is like day and night. Dramatic difference. If you look at what's happened in the data center, there has been the virtualization revolution. Can't remember the name of the company, but I believe you know, there was a company that actually built virtualization technology and pioneered that. So, you know, essentially things are getting better at the bottom layer of the stack and they've got so much better at the top layer of the stack. But unfortunately, in the middle of the sandwich does not taste very good. The middle of the sandwich has not gone through this process of revolution. The middle of the sandwich is actually really quite stale and it is quite possible that eating it will make you sick. 
So middleware fundamentally hasn't kept pace with the innovation above and below in the stack. You know, some of those things that I said we were trying to get rid of with Spring, that DHH and team were trying to get rid of with Rails, all those, that complexity and distraction from actually doing your job if you're a technologist. Woohoo, this is there in spades in middleware. Like, I mean, just looking at the, you know, notion of enterprise middleware suites is enough to make you dizzy. There's a lot of good software there, but the experience is not integrated. It is really complex. And frankly, when Paul was talking about the different generations, you know, this isn't the product of the kind of young, with it, cool generation. This is still, you know, the product um, of people who come from a very different era. So we have to do better than this. The way we do better than this is through PaaS, or Platform as a Service. PaaS actually, it's an acronym that we've been bandying around so much internally that you know you kind of get used to it. But I must say, I still think the t-shirts are pretty cool. Um, that, I hadn't thought of that one. So make sure you get a t-shirt later. PaaS is the solution because in PaaS, the unit of currency is the application. Once upon a time, if I was a developer, I wrote my application using whatever framework, and then I had to go get a server. And it probably just wasn't one server, it was like a server stack. Whether I was using Java or PHP or Rails or whatever, there were a bunch of things that I had to integrate together. And it was complex and it you know, started to bring me back into this um, kind of middleware suite hell. What I fundamentally wanted to do as a developer is I wanted to write an application and be able to deploy that application to an infrastructure that understood that I'm a developer, I care about applications. This is what PaaS does. And this is why PaaS really is the solution to middleware complexity. However, when we look at the current PaaS offerings, we don't think the potential has been fully achieved. For example, typically current PaaS offerings do have some of that hotel, California um, characteristics. For example, they might tie you into a single programming model. They might tie you into a small set of services that isn't going to increase that often unless the vendor offers a new service themselves. And they typically do not help you in writing applications that need to use different clouds. So coming back to the notion of the spring values, these values really are not limited to the Java community. And I think they have a lot to offer in the experience that we have through spring, has a lot to offer to how we go and clean up this space and how we you know, fix the part of the sandwich that doesn't taste very good. So one of those key points, by the way, is portability. And I think you'll hear much more from my colleagues about how we're delivering portability. Last week, we published something called the Cloud Developers Bill of Rights. I'm not going to go through um, them line by line, but I think it's an, interesting, it's an interesting document. And I'd really encourage you to read it, critique, send up your suggestions, because it really reflects an attempt to bring openness or understand what openness is in the PaaS space. So you know, some of those things include essentially the right to portability. Just as if you wrote an app using Spring, you could deploy to Tomcat or WebLogic or JBoss. Well, if you write an application for somebody's cloud, you shouldn't be locked in to that cloud. However, when we published the Cloud Developers Bill of Rights last week, we deliberately left one out. And I'm very pleased that today we can add that. All the frameworks that we've talked about are open source. Open source is where it's at for developers today. And we recognize this. So with respect to our core PaaS technology, it is open source. And I think that is going to be a very positive choice for the industry. So today, we are launching Cloud Foundry. And this is the open platform as a service. Open in a number of ways, only one of which is open source. 
hopefully by the end of the talk, when you've actually seen some code and samples rather than looked at slides, I believe you will agree that the openness is very important.